Good morning, everybody. David Kirsch here. And we're on honeycomb.fit. I don't have any music on right now because I want you to listen. Yeah, those are birds. It's kind of crazy, right? Those are birds. The girls and I, after three months of quarantine, have gotten out of crazy New York City. And I can't tell you what, just a few minutes outside, trees and birds, and I'm actually listening to the ocean. It's pretty awesome. So I wanted to share it with you. It's a nice way to start Saturday, don't you think? Take a couple of seconds. Close your eyes, breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> you know, the last few months have been so insane. And being a Capricorn and having my two beautiful daughters to take care of, um, I just put my head down and I focused on the tasks at hand taking care of myself, taking care of my girls, staying calm, putting out good energy. That, that's what that was about. So anyway, I'm gonna put the music on. Today's workout is going to be sharing some of my favorite moves. Now, look, I'm not, um, I'm not at home. I'm not in my living room. I'm not surrounded by my things, but that's okay, right? because anywhere, anytime, no gym, no problem. That's how we do it, right? Gotta take care of ourselves first and foremost. I'm gonna turn the music on now. So, I don't know. Let's pick the body part, okay? Here are some of the things I have. I've got a medicine ball, and I'm gonna start with my favorite lower back hamstring glute stretch. Around the world, you can be anywhere, anytime. Arms up, core tight, reaching it right down. Full rotation, stopping on top, cutting right back down. Stretching out my arms and my back. Connecting my mind and my body. Now, if you don't have a medicine ball, you can grab one of these fancy, I like this purple waist. Things you'll find in someone else's makeshift gym. I love it. Arms up, core nice and tight. Oh yeah, stretching it out, stretching it out. Reaching high, lower back. If you can, keep your legs straight. Get it out, you come all the way around. Reaching down to the floor, engaging my glutes and my hamstrings, my lower back my middle back. One more. All right, I've got these guys. I'll keep them. So, let's go to shoulders. What do you think? Okay, guys? I'm gonna lift my shoulders up. I'm gonna retract my shoulder blades. My core is engaged. I'm gonna say that a lot because that's what we need to do. I don't want you engaging your traps at all. Everything's a little wonky today. The music is a little wonky. And you know what? I'm gonna listen to the birds. Forget about the music. We're gonna retract shoulder blades. We're gonna go front raises. I love working the anterior deltoids. So important whether you're swimming, you're playing tennis, or just overall wellness. Coming up parallel to the floor, keeping your arms straight. You can use water bottles. You can use your body weight resistance also if you're just starting. And then coming right out to the side, you can see lifting it up and coming right out to the side. I kind of like the birds. 
and the noise of the ocean, right? Not a bad place to wake up to. Right here, core tight. Right up, six repetitions. So, one of my followers asked me, she said, as this quarantine has gone on, I've gotten more and more forgetful. Last but not least in the shoulders, right? I know I said my favorite things, but I look at exercise and I like to create little mini giant sets. So, complete movements here. This is a great arms, shoulder, upper back and definitely a little bit of cardio too. Use a little bit of legs going in there, right up here nice and tight. Again, it could be water bottles, it could be your body weight, it doesn't matter. And then uppercuts. And I answer my forgetful friend, make a list, make it a ritual, right? And here's your checklist. You wanna put on your trainers, your athletic wear, whatever you're wearing. You want a bottle of water. You want your heart rate monitor to watch for sure. And if you can avoid bringing your phone, or at least disconnecting it, make this moment all about yourself. You know that when you do it, you're gonna feel better about yourself, have better energy, a better mind and body, all of that, and that's what the goal is here. All right, so I got my shoulders. Let's see what else I have here. Oh, whoa, look at this. Okay, last but not least, right? We're gonna step on these. These resistance bands are great because you control the tension based on, on one foot, two foot, and how far apart your feet are. And I can go right up to some arms, little bicep curls, and finish my shoulders with some shoulder presses. Core is nice and tight, pressing right up. In just a few minutes, I've got my shoulders warmed up and ready. Feeling strong, connected. Again, my shoulder blades are retracted meaning they're pressed together. I don't want to rotate forward. And I'll do a couple more. And last one. Good. All right. Let's see what we got going on over here. What's happening? Huh. Okay, we got music again. We're gonna work. Back over rear deltas right here. Nice flat, core tight. I like to work it out here. I call it a T. This is my T. And this is my V. Starting at a point, coming back. Working a little lower down. I'm not engaging my neck. Core is nice and tight. All right. So easy, right guys? Anytime, anywhere. Moving your body, connecting mind and body. That's what this is about. Every day, every day. All right, so you're scheduling your workouts. A friend of mine is afraid about eating out again. Why are you afraid about eating out, right? I'm gonna say, all the lessons you've learned over the last few months about eating well, what it does for you, are the lessons you're gonna take when you go out, right? You know if you eat too much bread for dinner, you're gonna feel bloated, and you're not going to feel very good about yourself. Plus, you're going to be full and not really enjoy the best part of the meal. And the best part is never the bread. All right. So I'm using the bands, and my core is tight, and I'm working right in here right now. 
I love working my core, so important, both aesthetic but also importantly, strong foundation, strong core. You definitely want to have it. Right? So you've got those lessons. You want to have a glass of wine, that's fine. It's funny, when I got to my friend's house, she poured me a glass of wine. Well, here's the thing, right? I didn't want it, right? I knew I had to be here with you in the morning. For a second, it was white wine. I don't like it. I prefer red. So. Side right here, guys. Okay, I don't want to be lopsided. Here we go, right here. So, but I chose not to do it. I had some water. We had salad, avocado. It's all good. So, the takeaway for me is, and it wasn't being peer pressure, right? I just knew myself. I didn't need to have a mind. I didn't want. Okay, I got my shoulders, we got a little bit of core. I'm gonna do some more core. But if somebody would ask me one of my favorite moves, right? And you don't really need anything but your body, you would have to be push-ups. And for you today, I'm gonna use a medicine ball because I'm just grabbing what's around here. My hands can be balanced. I think you can do it. Core nice and tight, so you're getting the added benefit of engaging your core too, and coming right down. This would have to be my favorite chest exercise. Also working my triceps, my core, and my upper back. Back second, then you want to add a little extra. Here. 
I'm going to work the other side. My feet are a little wider than the shoulder with distance apart. Come right down. Pivoting. Right up. Pivoting with my trail leg. That's it. My back foot pivots forward as I'm coming up. Working the obliques and my core. So, another friend, worried about playing tennis and, you know, social distancing. And I've got to say, out of all the sports out there, having a nice, friendly, competitive game of tennis, a little more shoulders, why not, right? I'd probably elbow bump instead of handshake or hug at the end of the game. But definitely, I wouldn't be concerned. If you're playing on a proper tennis court, you're definitely going to be six feet apart. So, don't find reasons not to move your body. Find reasons to move your body, please. You'll feel better physically. You'll definitely feel better mentally. You gotta get out and move. I gotta tell you, sitting in traffic last night, getting out, going out east, we're on Long Island, where I grew up. I didn't care. The further I got away from the city, the more energized I felt, the less stress. And I think when you're in something, you don't realize how stressful it can be, right? How exhausting it can be. And I love when you're doing kickbacks. And when I do my kickbacks, I turn my palms on top, working the long head of the tricep. Right? So finding a moment to just break away mentally and physically has been so energizing. All right. Somebody would ask me, and I know I have a lot of favorites, right? But if somebody asked me my, my one favorite butt move, leg move, right? It would have to be, Um, so Susan just asked me what music we were playing in the car on the way out. You know what we were doing? We weren't playing any music, we were talking to each other. And it was actually the most precious. Trenny took a quick cat nap, she woke up, and we played picnic. Um, and it was the most precious 45 minutes that I've had with her in three months, really. Amelia was sleeping and the picnic goes, we're gonna go on a picnic and I'm gonna bring a picnic blanket and I'm gonna bring watermelon and you go back and forth and you have to repeat what the other one is saying. And we got all the way up to um, Pashula and hummus and chips and, and literally 45 minutes. And it was just fun and we laughed and so no, I didn't want any music. I didn't want anything taking away from that for the moment. These are the moments that um, we'll look back on. Right? Dad, do you remember when we were driving out to Samira's house and we, yeah. yeah. Violet away here, Violet away here. All right, so my favorite butt move, and there are many, right, because I am the master of, um, I'd have to say it's probably one of my first signature moves, the platypus walk. Because, and someone's asking about those smile lines. I never looked at it as a smile line, but I looked at it as lifting up and fighting Mother Nature. You gotta do it, right? She wants to pull shit down, and I'm, and I'm gonna say, you're not pulling my stuff down. It's gonna be tight and firm, and my six pack's gonna stay there. That's my no line. And anyone telling me they're firm, and they're feeling good, but they don't have those cuts. Sorry, baby. How important was that glass of wine? I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna back off of that. I don't care what anyone says. You drink your wine, it's gonna be harder for you, particularly as we get older. And some of us are getting older. 
to be as tight. I choose to be tight. I do. I don't need a one. Back to my favorite butt move without further ado. Platypus walk. I'm going to attribute it to Francesca because she and Amelia do the ultimate. Francesca and Amelia do the ultimate platypus walk. Holding this core nice and tight, stepping it back, keeping the weight in my heels. I'm working my adductors, my inner thighs. I'm working my smile lines. I'm working right over here. So nothing is gonna hang out of that bathing suit. Everything when I walk, everything's gonna feel pert and perky. And you're gonna go back and forth five times, six times. As many times as you can, you're gonna push it and you're gonna visualize your body, your butt, tightening, firming, lifting. Uh, you have the power, right? You have the power to change this all. We work on chest, we work on arms, we work on shoulders, we work on inner thighs, adductors, and glutes, right? So if I were to take this ball and it's not a lot of weight, I could hitch at the waist doing a little bit of a good morning, but also called the hip thrust, right? I'm going to hit at the waist. Here's my deadlift coming up. As I come up, I'm pulling my hips forward. I'm squeezing my glutes. So reaching down, straight legs, and coming right up. Right there. Amazing. I'm going to do 10 repetitions now. 10. There it is. 10. And 9. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Let me tell you something. When I do my deadlifts, I use a lot of weight. This is a 10 pound medicine ball. And I'm feeling this, right? Isometric contraction is such an easy and effective way to engage your body. Last one, and I'm gonna stay here now and I'm pulsing. That is small pulsing, pulsing my hips, tightening up my glutes. That's what this is about. Amazing. So, I got my leg, I got my butt, I have my core, I have my arms, I can do some more arms. But I want to face you guys, so let's see how I'm going to do this. I know what I'm going to do. Right here, single arm bicep curl, doubly good because it's going to force me to engage my core. Soft knees, hands on my hip, and right up. Working my biceps. I don't want to forget any parts. So if I forgot something, please let me know. A really important question that I saved for last, right? Someone just asked me, they're a mental health professional. And post-stress syndrome, right? For me, for my girls, between the COVID-19 quarantine and sadly, not, not the peaceful protests, but the riots in New York, curfews and looting and so many other irresponsible things. My girls are stressed. And I think what you need to do is you need to just talk to them. You need to reassure them. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna try my hardest and try to explain it. What does it mean, right? I'm not gonna get political, guys, I'm not. But I think that often parents, caretakers, don't want to talk to kids about things oh they're too young and I think kids really need to know I think they do right um, but do it in a way that understands 
understand it, right? And most importantly, stress, loving kindness, right? We all come from the same place. We're all born the same way. And we gotta be loving and kind, accepting. There's the message, right? Franny Millie and I were driving towards the Midtown Tunnel yesterday. And we saw a relatively young woman with a baby. And maybe the baby was two years old, maybe in a stroller. And it started pouring rain. Um, I'm going to do some more curls. And I, I, I can't make this stuff up, right? The woman was hysterical crying. And the baby was crying. And Freddie said, Daddy, I wish I had taken my piggy bank. Take care of her. Why is she crying? Because she probably doesn't have anywhere to go. She has a baby to take care of. So we need to be grateful and do all we can do to help people and to be grateful and appreciative for the things we do have. But it was a moment, it was a very important teaching moment. And uh, I'm so proud of my girls. They're, they're so connected, right? They're empathetic and, and they feel, they felt her pain. And um, I wanted to share that with you, right? The world is not all rosy and not all good. Um, but I think it's important to show our kids um, and teach them that not everyone has the same amount of things and, and things like, like a roof over their heads and food and shelter and, and someone to love them. So, that was a lot, right? It was a lot. On the way out, on the way out of the city, that was my final, okay, we need a little break. So, oh. Alrighty. I'm gonna take the medicine ball now. And this is a bit of cardio, a bit of lower back stretching. Come right back down here. You can do this with a dumbbell. You can do it with water bottles. You can do it just with the arms. Great. Full body, little legs and butt, core, back, arms. So, I have to say, Uncle Joel, love is not learned. Respectfully, I say to you, we're born with that. We're not born with hate. Nelson Mandela said that, right? God bless him. And, uh, right? We're born loving and embracing the world, right? And then stuff happens, whether environmental, whatever it is. So, as we're surrounded by things that are not loving and kind, we can easily learn to shut that out and go back to ourselves, right? Find the inner child, I know it sounds cliche, right? But find the inner child, the one that was joyful, as I was, at the end of school, running out in the yard and, and playing sick ball, uh, sick ball or, or soccer. Uh, sick ball, not sick ball, sick ball. Very simple things. We were able to go outside um, until dinner time. Those are the things that I think our kids are missing sometimes now. Set. So we gotta pull back, we gotta find that again. Um, and I think, you know, I think we can. So today's session was basically full body, whatever I have, right? Here I'm missing a, a makeshift gym, it's not mine. And my friends are graciously posting Amelia Francesca and I, and I just wanted to show you 
that with a resistance band, with dumbbells, a medicine ball, um, strength bands, your mind and your body, you can get it going, right? I feel good. I do. I'm gonna probably do some more push-ups now if you're okay with that. Um, and think about it. If you have any last-minute questions, I'm going to be here after my set. I'll come up and I'll answer them. So think of those questions, please. For time. Time is now to send those questions. here before I sign off. Just before I sign off. Good morning mom. Good morning Bonnie. Alrighty. I don't think I missed any questions. I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna wish you an amazing day. Be safe. Be loving and kind. And if you haven't done it yet, maybe you did it with me, move your body. You'll feel better, you'll look better, you'll be happier. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you soon.